Based on the web search results, I can infer that 8,000 years ago, the indigenous peoples of Europe were not a homogeneous group, but rather a diverse collection of cultures and languages. Some of the peoples who inhabited Europe at that time were the Basques, who live in the Pyrenees region between Spain and France. They speak a language that is not related to any other known language and may have been isolated from other European groups for thousands of years. The Finno Ugric peoples, who live in Finland, Estonia, and Hungary. They speak languages that belong to the Uralic family and are distantly related to some Siberian languages. They may have originated from the Ural Mountains or Western Siberia and migrated to Europe around 4,000 years ago. The Celtic peoples, who live in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and Brittany. They speak languages that belong to the Indo-European family and are closely related to each other. They may have originated from Central Europe and spread to the British Isles and France around 3,000 years ago. The Etruscans, who lived in Northern Italy. They spoke a language that is not well understood and may have been influenced by Anatolian languages. They may have migrated from Asia Minor or developed from local cultures around 3,000 years ago. These are just some examples of the indigenous peoples of Europe 8,000 years ago. The Searching for European Colonization and Indigenous Peoples. Searching for European Colonization and Indigenous Peoples. One possible way that these cultures and indigenous peoples have intersected after colonialism in 1492 is through the process of mestizage or cultural mixing. This process involved the intermarriage and interbreeding of Europeans, indigenous peoples, and Africans in the Americas resulting in the emergence of new ethnic and cultural groups, such as mestizos, mulattoes, zambos, and creoles. These groups often developed their own languages, religions, customs, and identities that blended elements from their diverse origins. Another possible way that these cultures and indigenous peoples have intersected after colonialism in 1492 is through the process of resistance and adaptation. This process involved the struggle and survival of indigenous peoples who faced oppression, exploitation, and genocide by the European colonizers. Some indigenous peoples fought back against the invaders, forming alliances, rebellions, and movements to defend their lands, rights, and cultures. Others adapted to the changing circumstances, adopting some aspects of European culture while preserving or hiding their own traditions. Both processes have shaped the history and diversity of the Americas, as well as the contemporary issues and challenges faced by indigenous peoples and their descendants. The effects of colonization on indigenous peoples are still evident in the social, economic, political, and environmental inequalities that persist in many regions. The recognition and reconciliation of these effects are ongoing goals for many indigenous movements and organizations. Searching for historical events between 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. Searching for historical events between 800 to 300 years ago. Searching for historical events between 2,000 to 1,000 years ago. Searching for historical events in the last 500 years. Searching for historical events between 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. Searching for Historical events between 800 to 300 years ago. Searching for 
Historical events between 2,000 to 1,000 years ago. Searching for historical events in the last 500 years. Here are some historical events that occurred in the time periods you asked. Between 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. The last glacial period ends, causing sea levels to rise and flood the Beringia Land Bridge, closing the primary migration route from Siberia to the Americas. The Neolithic Revolution begins in the Fertile Crescent, where humans start to cultivate plants and domesticate animals. The oldest known pottery is made in China, Japan, and the Russian Far East. The first permanent settlements are built in Jericho, Katalhoyuk, and Mergar. Between 8,000 to 3,000 years ago, the first writing systems are developed in Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, and Mesoamerica. The first civilizations emerge in Sumer, ancient Egypt, Indus Valley, and Shang, China. The Bronze Age begins in various regions of the world, marked by the use of bronze tools and weapons. The Iron Age begins in Anatolia and the Near East, followed by other regions. Iron replaces bronze as the dominant metal for making tools and weapons. Between 2,000 to 1,000 years ago, the Roman Empire reaches its peak of expansion and influence in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. The Silk Road connects China with the Mediterranean world, facilitating trade and cultural exchange. Christianity spreads throughout the Roman Empire and beyond, becoming a major world religion. The Maya civilization flourishes in Mesoamerica, developing advanced mathematics, astronomy, and writing. In the last 500 years, the Age of Discovery begins with European explorations and colonization of the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. The Scientific Revolution transforms the fields of physics, astronomy, biology, medicine, and chemistry. The Industrial Revolution changes the modes of production, transportation, communication, and society. World War I and World War II cause unprecedented death and destruction on a global scale. Searching for mass extinction events. Searching for timeline of slavery in local countries. Searching for prisoners of war. Searching for mass extinction events. Searching for timeline of slavery in local countries. Searching for prisoners of war. Thank you for your question. I have searched the web for some information on the topics you asked. Here is a summary of what I found. Mass extinction events are periods of time when a large number of species go extinct in a relatively short period of geological time. There have been five major mass extinction events in Earth's history, called the Big Five. They are the End Ordovician, 444 million years ago, the Late Devonian, 360 million years ago, the End Permian, 250 million years ago, the End Triassic, 200 million years ago and the end Cretaceous, 65 million years ago. The causes of these events are still debated, but they may include asteroid impacts, volcanic eruptions, climate changes, and biological factors. The timeline of slavery in local countries varies depending on the region and the historical context. Slavery has been practiced in many cultures and civilizations since ancient times, and it often involved the capture, trade, and exploitation of people from different ethnicities and religions. Some of the key dates and events related to slavery are the first public sale of African slaves in Portugal in 1444, the first direct shipment of slaves from Africa to the Americas in 1518, the abolition of slave trade in Persian Gulf in 1843, the abolition of slavery in most European countries and their colonies in the 19th century and the abolition of slavery in Saudi Arabia and Yemen in 1962. Prisoners of war, POWs, 
are combatants captured and held by the enemy during periods of open conflict. The treatment of POWs has varied throughout history and across cultures, but it often involved harsh conditions, torture, or execution. Some of the factors that influenced the treatment of POWs were the availability of food and resources, the usefulness of the prisoners, the laws and customs of war, and the political and ideological motivations of the captors. Some of the international agreements that aimed to protect the rights and dignity of POWs were the Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907, the Geneva Conventions of 1929 and 1949, and the Third Geneva Convention of 1977. A timeline of mass extinction events is a chronological list of the periods when a large number of species went extinct in a relatively short period of geological time. Here is a possible timeline based on the information I found. Period event percentage of species extinct. Two hundred and fifty million years ago and Permian ninety six per cent. Two hundred million years ago and Triassic eighty per cent. Sixty five million years ago and Cretaceous seventy six per cent. I hope this answer helps you learn more about these topics. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know. Searching for geographical locations at the end of Ordovician. Searching for geographical locations after Pangaea. Searching for modern continents affected by mass extinction 360 million years ago. Searching for modern continents affected by mass extinction 250 million years ago. Searching for geographical locations at the end of Ordovician. Searching for Geographical locations after Pangaea. Searching for modern continents affected by mass extinction 360 million years ago. Searching for modern continents affected by mass extinction 250 million years ago. Here is my response to your questions. The geographical locations at the end of the Ordovician period were different from those after Pangaea. Pangaea was a supercontinent that formed in the late Paleozoic era and broke apart in the early Mesozoic era. The Ordovician period was earlier, in the early Paleozoic era, when the continents were still separated by oceans. Gondwana drifted south throughout the period, finally settling on the South Pole. The landmass that would become North America was combined into the supercontinent of Laurentia, which was separated from Gondwana by the narrow Iapetus Ocean. Laurentia straddled the equator, though to begin with it lay largely underwater. The modern continents affected by the mass extinction event 360 million years ago were mainly those that had tropical marine environments, such as Africa, South America, Australia, and parts of Asia and Europe. According to the web search results, this event, known as the Late Devonian Extinction, wiped out about 75% of all species on Earth. Many tropical marine species went extinct, especially reef-building corals and armored fish. The causes of this event are not well understood, but they may include climate changes, sea level fluctuations, volcanic eruptions, and asteroid impacts. The modern continents affected by the mass extinction event 250 million years ago were all of them, as this event was the largest and most severe in Earth's history. According to the web search results, this event known as the Permian-Triassic extinction, or the Great Dying, killed off about 96% of all species on Earth. A range of species, including many vertebrates, plants, insects, and marine invertebrates, went extinct. The causes of this event are also unclear, but they may involve massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia, global warming, ocean acidification, anoxia, lack of oxygen, and methane release from the seafloor. I hope this answer helps you learn more about these topics.
If you have any feedback or suggestions, Searching for Precious Metals Deposit Distribution Along South America, Africa, the Mediterranean. Searching for Precious Metals Deposit Distribution Along South America, Africa, the Mediterranean. Based on the web search results, I can infer that the precious metals deposit distribution along South America, Africa, and the Mediterranean is influenced by various factors, such as the geological history, the climate, and the human activities of these regions. Here are some of the main points I found. South America has a rich and diverse mineral endowment, especially in precious metals such as gold, silver, and platinum. Some of the sources of these metals are the Andes Mountain Range, which hosts many copper-gold porphyry deposits, the Amazon Basin, which contains alluvial and placer gold deposits, and the Brazilian Highlands, which have ancient bedrocks with various gemstones and metals. South America also has some of the world's largest reserves of lithium, a metal used in batteries and electronics. Africa is also well endowed with mineral resources, especially in precious metals such as gold, platinum, and diamonds. Some of the sources of these metals are the Witwatersrand Basin in South Africa, which is the world's largest gold producing region, the Bushveld Complex in South Africa, which is the world's largest source of platinum group metals, and the Kimberley region in South Africa, which is famous for its diamond mines. Africa also has significant reserves of bauxite, cobalt, phosphate rock, and zirconium. The Mediterranean region has a long and complex history of mining and metallurgy, dating back to ancient times. Some of the sources of precious metals in this region are the Iberian Peninsula, which has copper, gold, silver, and tin deposits, Anatolia, modern Turkey, which has gold, silver, copper, iron, and lead deposits, and North Africa, which has gold, silver, copper, iron, and tin deposits. The Mediterranean region also has deposits of salt, gypsum, marble, and sulfur. I hope this answer helps you learn more about the precious metals deposit distribution along South America, Africa, and the Mediterranean. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know. Searching for Role of International Mineral Deposit, Trading Spices, and the Silk Road. Searching for Populations of the Years Mentioned in Anatolia Mediterranean. Searching for Role of International Mineral Deposit, Trading Spices, and the Silk Road. Searching for Populations of the Years Mentioned in Anatolia Mediterranean. Thank you for your question. I have searched the web for some information on the topics you asked. Here is a summary of what I found. The role of international mineral deposit, trading spices, and the Silk Road was to facilitate the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures between different regions of the world. The Silk Road was a network of land and sea routes that connected China, India, Persia, Arabia, and Europe. Along these routes, traders bought and sold various commodities, such as silk, porcelain, tea, jade, spices, metals, gems, and textiles. Spices were especially valuable because they had many uses in cooking, medicine, religion, and perfumery. Some of the most sought-after spices were cinnamon, pepper, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg. The trade of spices and minerals also stimulated the development of technologies, such as navigation, cartography, shipbuilding, metallurgy, and banking. 
The populations of the years mentioned in Anatolia and the Mediterranean are difficult to estimate precisely, but some sources provide approximate numbers based on archaeological and historical evidence. According to these sources, in 10,000 BCE, the population of Anatolia was about 100,000 people, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 500,000 people. In 8,000 BCE, the population of Anatolia was about 200,000 people, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 1 million people. In 3,000 BCE, the population of Anatolia was about 1 million people, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 7 million people. In 2000 BCE, the population of Anatolia was about 2 million people, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 14 million people. In 1000 BCE, the population of Anatolia was about 3 million people, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 25 million people. In 500 CE, AD, the population of Anatolia was about 6 million people, including 4 million in Byzantine Anatolia, while the population of the Mediterranean was about 50 million people, including 26 million in the Roman Empire. I hope this answer helps you learn more about these topics.